Welcome to Discovering. Tonight we're at Camp Nesbitt in the Ottawa National Forest where sixth graders from across the western UP get a few days of outdoor education. What's been the most fun so far? Canoeing. And Brian is back with a story on stalking brown trout in the Cedar River. So sit back and relax. It's Monday night and it's time for Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long-time lover of northern Michigan. Camp Nesbitt is like a rite of passage for sixth graders in the western UP. I know. That's 11-year-old me on the bottom right of the photo in about 1994. And visiting Camp Nesbitt for the first time in almost 30 years, I could still pick out which cabin I stayed in. It was Owl. Camp Nesbitt is an outdoor camp designed for sixth graders. And we've been doing it for, let's see, I went in 1981 as a sixth grader. And then 84, five, I went as, as a counselor. And then, then I got hoodwinked into becoming director and I've done that for 24 years. Multiple school districts bring students to Camp Nesbitt and each group does their own programming and fundraising. And then the students fundraise the money to cover all the costs of the activities. And then it's really the leaders from the staff who put together the schedule and figure out who's going where and who's doing what. All right. I think one thing that's neat here too is they're putting many of the students from different schools together in groups. So they're, you know, kind of a little in the, out of their comfort zone, but also allows them to get to know other people and take risks and do things maybe they wouldn't do if they're with the peer group they're usually with. But at the end, they're all mashed together. And I'm surprised that a kid from Ontonog has never hopped on Ewan's bus just because they want to go visit them. So at the end, they're all just a big group of kids. Ontonagon, Ewan Trout Creek, and Waters Meat School districts combine kids for Nesbitt. I visited on their first day, and I stopped in again later in the week while the Dollar Bay, Tamarack City, and Lake Linden schools were there. For the purpose of this story, though, they're all getting lumped together. We're in our first day here at Camp Nesbitt. It's a three-day uh, trip. We're going to stay two nights, and um, they've got uh, shotgun shooting, archery, I think rifle, orienteering. Uh, here in this spot, we're doing canoeing. If they live up here, a lot of them will spend uh, many hours probably in the outdoors since it's surrounding us everywhere and uh, getting them comfortable with it, if, especially if maybe you know they don't do that a lot on their own or with their families. Were you excited to come to Camp Nesbitt? Yeah, Very. especially what the seventh graders now told us. Our whole class was talking about Our it. Our whole class is talking about it. Have you been looking forward to coming to Camp Nesbitt? Yeah, yeah. my mom told me a lot about it and I was really excited to come. Mm -hmm. I was really nervous when we started getting on the bus though. Are you nervous still? No. They're all pretty excited. Some of them are pretty nervous because some of them don't really do a lot of camping or much outdoors. And so they're nervous, but we make sure that they each have um, two counselors with them that are high school students who are really in charge of them. And those counselors are really good at working with the kids, getting them to feel comfortable and try new things. This is my second year here now. Um, I was a counselor last year. And like, it was just, I enjoyed it so much that I wanted to see that change like within the students as a counselor for myself. Um, last year was, it was just phenomenal. Like my kids, they were like, I don't want to be here. I don't have my phone. Like, is this really going to be fun? We're out in the woods. But then by the end of the week, they were like, I don't want to leave. Like, I'm going to miss you. Like, like, why could I not go without my phone before this? 
I did go to Camp Nesbitt in sixth grade, and I can very well say that I was one of those kids where I was like, I'm not going to enjoy this. I just want my phone. I want to go home. And I also was one of the kids that was like, I don't want to leave at the end of the week. Camp Nesbitt is located in the Ottawa National Forest and was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC, camp out of Sydna. The Nesbitt Lake Forest Camp was built in one year and completed in 1939, featuring 12 cabins, one infirmary, one utility building, one mess hall, one administration building, one swimming beach, two playgrounds, one dock, electric lights, running water, and capacity for 96 occupants. Here and now they use it for the whole summer. There'll be schools, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and, and um, church groups that come out here. These kids lucked out with the weather this year, and it was sunny and warm, at least the two days I visited, for all their outdoor activities. The warm weather also meant the black flies were out. My name is Ryan Tamlin, and I go to Dollar Bay School. Uh, we get to do a lot of stuff, including, like, racing in canoes, um, getting bit by bugs, shotgun shooting, archery. The Onsenagan Valley Sportsman's Club is doing the archery, the rifle, the shotgun, and the black powder. And someone from the Ottawa Sportsman's Club also comes and helps with that. Before the students came here, they were taught the book portion of hunter safety in school by Glyphwick, the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission, and here at Nesbitt, they get the hands-on education. The main purpose for me is at the end, the kids will get a hunter safety certificate. With some of the kids, they're going to be exposed through it through their lives because their parents hunt, their parents fish, their parents hike. And some kids don't have that, so it's, it gives them exposure from someone that's a very good instructor on what shooting a gun is like, because we always have a handful of kids that have never shot a gun. And our rule is that everyone has to try it. And like with the hunter safety, it's probably a misnomer because it's more, it's more gun safety than hunting. You know, with your hunter safety certificate, I think there's like 2% of it is hunting. The rest is safe gun handling and storage. I mean, they use a 20 gauge, they put low brass, and it's, it's, it's probably more noise scary, but we liked everyone to try it once just to say they did it. And it might be the only time the kid shoots a gun. I'm the sheriff for Onsenon County. I've been for 10 years, and I was under sheriff 12 years. And every year I get calls from parents like, I don't want my kid to hunt, have hunter safety because they are not going to ever hunt and that's just cruel. I say, okay, yeah, but it's hunters, it's weapon safety, it's gun safety. Do you know, well, we don't have guns in our house. Okay, do you think that they're going to go to a friend's house that has guns? No, I don't think so. I, I'll bet you they're going to. I said, so they're going to know, one, that guns aren't a mystery and two, how to properly handle them, or just not handle them at all because there's no adult present. Okay, how about you? There you go. First job. I'm Vaughn Nack, and I go to Ontonogan Area School. All right, and what are you learning today? Uh, right now we're learning how to go ca canoeing, and we just previously just shot shotguns and a couple other ones. Did you ever shoot a shotgun before? Uh, actually, yeah, I've gone turkey hunting with shotguns with my dad a couple times. Okay. Did you hit the clay pigeons today? Yeah, I got 10 total. Nice, nice. <laughs> what are you most excited about this week? Uh, this week, um, well, I, I can't wait to go uh, canoeing right after this. So we're just kind of going over the basic rules of how to uh, get into a canoe, how to exit a canoe, uh, what to do if you happen to fall out, the different paddling strokes and then um, just having them go out and spend a little time and looking for some uh, animals. We've seen some turtles, some fish, some actually baby turtles that are hatching out of the sand right now. I'm Alyssa D. Kramer and I go to Ewan Trout Creek School. I'm Madeline Ahonen and I go to Ewan Trout Creek School. All right, so what have you all done today? Well, we've shot guns, we've done archery, and Just went canoeing. Canoeing. Soaked from the boys. <laughs> What's been the most fun so far? Canoeing. Mm -hmm. right, why is that? Because we could splash other people and I ran, we ran into her a lot. With them. Yeah, it was fun. Nice, nice. What about the, the shooting? What Did you like that at all? Yeah, I, I liked, liked the 22s, nice. but the shotguns were pretty hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
the clay pigeons. Did you hit any clay pigeons? No, nope. I didn't. No. Nope. Close though. I was close too. Had you ever shot a gun before? Yes. Okay. Did you learn anything new then? A few kind things, of. yeah. Like what? <laughs> clay pigeons are hard to hit. Yeah, they're hard to hit. Cabinets is really fun and people should go even though they're terrified because you get to try new things. It's really fun overall. Today we have the low ropes course and then we have the ROTC out here doing some obstacle courses and other team building games. We have the U.S. Forest Services here talking about the watershed of the area and aquatic critters. And then we have my trail out here doing ORV and ATV rides for the kids. We're here to give ORV safety training for sixth graders today is from Lake Linden and Dollar Bay. I want to say it's been part of Canton Nesbitt for about eight years. Dale Rantla asked us, uh, marine safety was not popular anymore. And so my trail stepped up and said, you know, we can do this. So we did it. We've been doing it ever since and love it. My trail will go into the schools, teaches the book portion, and then they come out and do the um, hands-on writing. It's not required to do it, but we like it because, like your driver's test, you pass a test, they're not gonna give your driver's license, you drive down the highway. In the past, we always did marine safety, but a couple of years ago, I asked the kids how many people were actually gonna use a marine certificate. One kid raised his hand. Then I asked how many people would use a ORV certificate, and there was kids that raised both hands. So I knew it would be a, a blast provides them an opportunity uh, to start out right. They earn a certificate. Jim Foos provides them safety training in class. That's about a six hour training period. They need a certificate before they can ride the machines. And then they need to carry that certificate with them until they're 16 or older. In the class, they learn all the laws and um, techniques, how to ride, how to ride safely, um, everything that's required of them. And also they're they learn that they need to teach their parents that the parent has to be in direct supervision with these kids. We're teaching them their stop signs behind you. We have a slalom course, so we teach them how to go left and right. Some of them hadn't ridden a bike, so we teach them how to turn, uh, how to signal, proper trail etiquette. Trail spacing is critical. Uh, we've had a few near collisions, and so we're trying to keep them separated as well. And really, so they can go home and really, I'm not kidding, teach their parents and their peers and how to ride properly and safely and respect the trails. What are you learning in ATV safety? The safety for it, how to drive an ATV. All the signals and the protective gear and the safe space to stay away from people while good. riding. Good, good. Did you have fun? Yeah, yeah. it was a lot of fun. What I remember most about Camp Nesbitt is the high and low ropes course. The high course is no longer because some trees did come down, but the low course is still there. It was fun to watch the kids work together to solve the challenges that can only be accomplished by working as a team. They're used to being in nature, but it's really the team building aspect. It's been really cool to watch the students come together as cabins. One of the teams just finished the little ropes course, and they have to boost each other over this wall, and they have to lift each other through a tire, and all of these things. Stay behind them. Stay behind them. You get get an obstacle, and everyone uses the. I'm a strong man, I can do this, and it doesn't work. And then there's a, a little boy in the corner or a little girl that says, hey, we should try this. So it helps them solve it as a group. So it makes them a, a more cohesive unit. What did you learn in the low ropes course? Um, mostly about teamwork and yeah, that's about it. That's about it? Was it hard? Yeah, it was really hard actually. How so? Well, most of the time it required strength and stamina and a lot of brain. What was the hardest one? The wall. We, uh, two people were at the top and we would have to climb up the wall. 
That was the hardest. Were you guys successful? Yes. We just pushed each pushed each other way up, and at one point we used our sweatshirts to as a rope. Grab the other wrist. Grab the other wrist. Pull them up. Yank them up. Grab it, Jordy. It took a minute, but we got it. The Upper Peninsula is a fisherman's dream with 4,300 inland lakes, 12,000 miles of streams, and we're bordered on three sides by the Great Lakes. Pretty hard to beat. These waters are home to a variety of fish, but not all of them start their life on the bed of a lake or river. Fish stocking helps to enhance and expand the population of various fish species and is accomplished through the cooperative efforts of groups and organizations across the UP, working in partnership with the Department of Natural Resources for the benefit of us all. I was at the landing where the Cedar River pours into Lake Michigan, where one such cooperative effort between the DNR and the Beatty Not Great Lake Sport fishermen was underway to introduce a couple of truckloads of brown trout to their new home. Today we're at the Cedar River and uh, first time in many, many years uh, at the Cedar River anyhow, there's a brown trout plant. 13,500 uh, came in two trucks, came from the Odin Hatchery downstate and the state of Michigan has been very cooperative uh, and, and getting the brown trout fishery going back here. Uh, people as old as me remember the brown trout fishery at the Cedar River, we're trying to get it back. Uh, in addition to that, the M&M Great Lakes Sport Fishermen is a sister group to us. Um, there's 27,000 going in next Wednesday. They were supposed to go in on Monday, but uh, with the winds we've had, there's no way. Uh, so any any event, uh, so we had about 30, little over 30,000 brown trout and they're in the uh, as many as 11 inches, but uh, 8 inches is probably the average length on these fish. They're healthy, they're looking good, and praise God, we haven't seen a cormorant one yet. So we got some boats in the water trying to uh, harass the birds if they do show up to get these brown trout a plant a chance to get out. Um, so we're excited about that. In addition to that, uh, we have partnered with Bellarude out of Escanaba, and uh, we, we made a three-year agreement with them. We will match whatever they donate for, for fish. And uh, we did it last year. We did 6,000 brown trout up in the Ford River, Escanaba area. Uh, we're, we're doing it for the next three years. Uh, so we're excited. We wanna see the brown trout fishery come back. Uh, we haven't had a springtime fishery for years. So uh, we're hoping we can make enough of a difference. These fish are a wild rose strain and they are the larger and the more aggressive uh, fish uh, of the various strains that are out there seem to be the best for the Great Lakes. Uh, I figure a couple years before they're legal. Uh, there's some there's some outliers that you'll have some in a year that are legal. These are roughly 16, 17 month old fish that have been raised in a captive hatchery and this is the first time they've seen open water. So they got a lot to learn. They got to escape the gauntlet of the cormorants and the seagulls and the pelicans. Um, so that's why the boats were here, trying to chase the bird fish out, get them away from the birds. Uh, these fish should be catchable, figure two years. And uh, they, brown trout, uh, if you don't know, and I'm not an expert, but uh, they tend to be homebodies. It's not like a coho where they roam the whole lake. Uh, these fish are going to be relatively local. They could be very deep, they could be very shallow, but they're not going to go hundreds of miles like some of the other fish do. So these are fish that should be locals, should be catchable, and uh, just ask that if you do get a, an undersized brown trout, be gentle, let it go, be careful. Uh, there's a lot of money put into these fish and we'd like them to grow up and be a 20 pound trophy for some kid. We are raising walleyes again this year. We uh, Our oil tank pond in Kipling, uh, we're doing about 175,000 walleyes there this year. Uh, some people know, some people don't know, but last year uh, we raised whitefish. Uh, to our knowledge, we're the only ones that have raised whitefish successfully uh, as volunteers uh, and even some of the pros uh, to raise fall fingerling whitefish. So we're excited about that. We're hoping to do more of that in the future and do it literally a, a multi-species fishery in the Kipling, Escanaba area. We're trying to raise funds to keep doing this. Uh, but we have uh, some opportunities to possibly expand what we do even more. But as everything else in any of the groups that we deal with, volunteers are critical. So if you get a chance, uh, take look us up on Facebook, uh, Beta Not Great Lake Sport Fishermen. 
Also, sister group, m and Great Lakes Sport Fishermen out of Menominee. Great groups, hardworking people. We're trying to make the fishery for everyone. That's all for tonight, and I hope to see you right back here next week for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. <laughs>